in my never ending quest of actually trying to sort out my iOS devices, a part of that quest includes the components themselves. So today we're going to be talking about batteries. I know, very exciting, but honestly I am actually really excited to finally deal with this because I've had these batteries for not weeks, not months, but for years. Yeah, you probably shouldn't do that. I did it anyways, and it worked out in the end. But if you don't know anything about these batteries, then uh, highly not recommended. I'm only doing this because obviously I have a ton of iOS devices. And with that, you kind of need to know how to fix them up if they have something damaged. And what do you know? We actually have a low battery warning on the 5S here. Great timing. Now this will be a topic for another time, but if we also add a 5C here in the background, it kind of gives me like an early Hugh Jeffries video type of vibe, especially with the white background here. If you don't know about Hugh Jeffries, he makes a lot of awesome phone and other tech repair content. Highly recommended you check him out, but this, especially with the iPhone 6 that I'm using to record today's video, with the wired ear pods, it definitely feels like we're back in 2017. And the only reason I can actually film a video like this here is because we're actually making use of the cinema display setup. Now, why did it take me so long to actually get around to doing something with these batteries? And more importantly, you're probably wondering what's even useful about an old battery that has failed. This is from an iPhone 5 and this is from a 4S. The reason they've been taken out is because obviously there's something wrong with them. The iPhone 5 is kind of a spicy pillow and even though the 4S itself doesn't have any visible like bloating damage, the battery itself would not take any charge whatsoever. So obviously it failed internally in a different way. Now these were set aside in a climate controlled environment, obviously no sunlight or anything like that. And I essentially just left them to ensure that they wouldn't have any charge whatsoever before I actually worked on them. Now I haven't done anything like this up until now. So I wanted to ensure that I would take every safety precaution as possible, even though I probably could have done it forever ago. I put them off to the side and I kind of just forgot about them. Now every so often I would see them, but I decided, oh, I'll deal with that another time. And well, that time is now because these have been taking up space, collecting actual layers of dust, at least the container. So it's awesome to finally deal with these. And I did take my time with the BMS boards. It was actually way easier than I thought. Obviously, I was still extremely careful because, you know, metal tools and batteries do not really mix. But now I have the BMS boards separately and they have been organized. So in the event that I do actually need these or use them for some kind of project, I have them. I also plan on doing this with every bad battery going in the future because the BMS boards, at least for these older iPhone models, are not really paired to the specific device. So it is able to be reused in that aspect. And even though I don't necessarily have the equipment to do modifications like that yet, it's still nice to keep these because if I get rid of the battery with the BMS board, it's still a good component it's just the battery that has failed. I know how batteries like this are constructed, so seeing it in person with the actual BMS board was pretty cool, and saving that component is a nice addition to the parts collection. But if you have a battery like this, especially a newer one, and it is in spicy pillow condition, it is not highly recommended. It should be the only recommendation. It should be the only thing you do. Get rid of it as soon as possible because lithium ion batteries are not a joke. This video is also not a tutorial. It is just for entertainment. And with that, I'm finally free. I'm free. I don't have to worry about these batteries anymore. Finally. Well, that was short lived. And not only that, we also have a second one free of charge. Here we have an iPhone 4 and a 5S. Now the 5S is in basically brand new condition apart from obviously the battery. Now I've used this in the past, so I know it works completely fine. It also means that there's no iCloud because well, how else would I use it? It does have a screen protector because the screen is essentially in mint condition. I guess not necessarily anymore because of this. It's always been in a case and as you can see the housing definitely shows that because it's basically a mint condition example. So what we're going to do with this is we're obviously going to take the battery out and I do actually have a replacement for this. Now this is not actually a genuine iPhone 5S battery but this was in a parts iPhone and 
Last I remember, it should power on just fine. If it doesn't, I guess we're in for a surprise. But considering I have this on hand and, you know, having a functional 5S is better than this, I don't really care that it's a third party. I just want this to work again. Now, as for the iPhone 4, I know basically nothing about it. All I do know is that it is an iPhone 4 based on the model number and the antenna design. And this is also a standard model with the SIM card reader. I have no idea how much storage this has. I don't know if it has iCloud and I don't even know if it'll power up in the first place. I guess we'll just have to test it out and see, but first we gotta get this battery out of here. Honestly, the most impressive part about this is that despite the battery being the way it is, the glass itself is still basically in brand new condition. Now, obviously it detached itself from the frame, but I guess that's a lot better than having a damaged back. You can take an iPod Nano and put it in between the gap here. And there's even some space available. Like, that's insane. We'll start with the iPhone 4 because obviously that requires a lot more attention compared to the 5S. And besides the 5S, we already know it works completely fine. This is still a mystery that we have to uncover. So we have the iFixit toolkit to help us out with this because you just have to look at it to know that something is wrong. As impressive as it is to see it in this condition, it obviously can't stay like this because, you know, it's a battery a spicy pillow. Plus, if it does end up working, that means we have an extra iPhone 4. The iPhone 4 and 4S has a mid-frame construction. Now, while that can make some repairs a lot more difficult, in this case, it couldn't be easier because we just have the two pentalobe screws holding the back glass in place, and you can easily remove it. Now, maybe not so easy in this case, but it's still better than having the screen pop out or potentially get destroyed completely because of the pressure from the battery. As soon as we remove this screw, it'll probably uh, actually do nothing. And as for the second one, also nothing. So with the screws removed, this is actually a good demonstration of how the iPhone 4 is assembled. So we have these little clips here that basically lock into the stainless steel frame. And on this side, it's already detached because obviously the pressure, but on this side, they are still locked into place. But with enough force, we should be able to remove it without causing extra damage. Honestly, I did not really have a good idea up until now, so I guess I'll just try and take my time and record it, see what actually happens. Somehow, I was able to actually remove it without causing further damage, and this only raises further questions like, how did the back glass stay on the way it was, and how did it not break, because this is crazy. This is by far one of the worst batteries I've ever seen, and on the glass here, or rather on the frame part. When you position it correctly, you can see a very faint outline here of where it actually detached, but now it looks perfectly fine. The back glass is not exactly 100% mint, but it's pretty close, especially considering the fact that it had to survive with that. This is only slightly terrifying, and the sooner I get rid of this, the better. And we need to detach the connector here. Now, the nice part about this is that it basically already detached itself from the adhesive. There we go. Our iPhone 4 is now safe. I've never actually had a battery in this bad of condition. Now that the iPhone is free from that battery, I have a 30 pin cable connected up to a 12 watt iPad charger. Now this won't power up the iPhone completely, but it should show us if we actually have any signs of life. So I thought there was actually nothing showing up on the display, but when I tried it with another charger and in different lighting, I saw that the backlight is actually out. So we don't have a backlight here, but the LCD does power up. I have the CDMA iPhone 4 here, which is currently activation locked. As you can see, it works just fine, but obviously we have iCloud, so I can't make use of it. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna temporarily connect the battery from this up to this to see if it's even worth repairing because if there's iCloud or a passcode or something like that, I can't really do anything with it, but it is still useful as a parts device. So initially I just wanted to kind of connect the battery while it was still inside the iPhone, but then I realized, how am I gonna unplug it? So I took it out of the iPhone 4 CDMA here, and this did actually power up. But the thing is, it's impossible to see what's actually going on here. You can barely see it says enter passcode. I know this looks terrible on camera, but there's literally no other way I can record this. 
So this is on iOS 7. It does have a passcode, and that means that if we do have an iCloud account, we can't really do anything about it. So it looks like this is mainly just going to be a parts iPhone. The digitizer part of the screen itself does work, as well as the LCD, and cosmetically it's still in great condition. I also double checked the IMEI number from the SIM card tray here, and it does report it as having iCloud. So, at least mystery solved I guess. I'm actually glad that we started off with this, because if we ended off the video with this, that would have been a pretty disappointing ending. And just like that, it actually looks like a normal iPhone 4 again. Now this is definitely way more straightforward because, well, we don't have to worry about the battery like that. Obviously we should still take precautions here because it is still a lithium ion battery. Now I don't want to apply too much pressure here because obviously the screen itself is still in good condition. So we're just going to have to be extra careful with this. Believe it or not, this was actually a bit more stressful than the iPhone 4 battery. Now there's a couple of reasons why. The first one applies to pretty much any 5S repair. You have to be careful of the Touch ID cable because if you accidentally damage that, no more Touch ID. Secondly, it wasn't super easy to get something like this underneath because with the way that the LCD detached itself from the frame, you don't want to put this in between there because you'll end up damaging the display. And of course, because there is slight pressure from the battery, it's not really a good idea to put something like a suction cup on top to help you with opening it up because you could end up breaking the display that way. But fortunately, it seems to be just fine. I double checked it and it seems like there are no cracks within the LCD. I really hope this isn't damaged, but I guess we'll just have to see when we test out the new battery. There's actually a metal cover on the Touch ID cable itself. But once we remove that, it's basically just like removing a standard iPhone 5 display. And yes, there's a lot of debris here, but I'll remove this once we actually disconnect the display from the housing. Now, even though it's not super noticeable, it is indeed a slightly spicy pillow because, well, it was enough to actually cause the screen to pop up. And you can see that, uh, yeah, it's definitely time to replace the battery. Now with the iPhone 5, this is when they started to use the newer style adhesive. So instead of having the awesome pull tab on the side like we saw on the iPhone 4, we're going to have to deal with this nonsense down here. This adhesive is always terrible. I've never had any luck with it before. As you can see, this is effectively what happened to it. The first second I tried to actually, you know, remove it the way it's supposed to be removed. It's honestly not that big of a deal because isopropyl alcohol makes a big difference when you're trying to remove this. But I mean, look at this. Instead of removing the adhesive, it started to actually like disconnect the BMS board from the battery. Like, come on, that's terrible. I've always had a better experience with the pull tab in the iPhone 5 and like we saw on the iPhone 4. Even though that also takes some time to actually remove effectively, at least you have something to hold on to instead of just a pull tab that will instantly break. And it's also pretty funny to see that the information from the battery is now on the adhesive here. And because I used isopropyl alcohol, I'll wait for this to dry out a bit before we install the new battery. And I'm not even going to bother with new adhesive because again, this is a third party battery. I'm not entirely sure what battery health it's at. In the future, I could always get a new battery, apply new adhesive, maybe get a whole bunch of the older style with the pull tab and replace it because this never works. Maybe it did work better back in the day, but considering this is a smartphone from 2013, it's fair to say that the adhesive has probably gotten weaker, like structurally. So I guess it's not too uncommon to see it tear. Everything is connected, but it's just for testing. Nothing is permanently installed yet. So far, so good. The display is still functional. And it looks like we are boot looping. What do you know? We actually have the low power indicator now. So it looks like the battery did take a while to wake up. The 5S is back. It is so awesome to see this actually working again with a battery that takes a charge. What a crazy concept. Instead of having this, we actually have a random third party battery that still works. I'm not complaining though because that battery was otherwise just sitting doing nothing and this 5S was stuck without a battery. It actually powered up pretty fast but I am also using an iPad charger so that probably helped it out. 
It's already at 11% here, but it has also been charging for a little while. As for the battery health, I'm not sure. We will just have to plug it into a Mac and double check. But I'm also really happy to see that the display is still completely operational. We haven't damaged it whatsoever. I was very nervous about that. It was actually reset the last time I used it. It's on iOS 10, which I thought was more unique for the 5S, but then I realized you can actually do an over-the-air downgrade. But ever since I've had this 5S, it's always been on iOS 10. And this also has 32 gigabytes of storage. The last thing to do now is to disassemble it again, clean it up a bit, and then once we have it reassembled, we can enjoy our 5S as if we just got it back in 2013 because it genuinely is a very good example of a 5S. The 5S is completely reassembled. I've cleaned it up as best as I possibly could. There was actually quite a bit of dirt and debris around the bezel as you saw earlier, but also in the actual housing itself. But with all of that removed, it is looking way better than it did before. Plus the fact that I can actually use it is also a nice bonus. Another awesome pleasant surprise is that the battery that we installed only has 18 charge cycles. I double checked with coconut battery and yes, it seems like this battery has pretty much never been used. It's essentially like we just installed a brand new battery. I'm really happy with how this turned out because we took care of these batteries right here and I was able to actually make use of the parts I had on hand. And even though we discovered that the iPhone 4 is essentially just a parts device now, at least we don't have to worry about this battery anymore. We were also able to save the BMS board from the 5S battery, which is awesome. Another BMS board is saved for the parts collection. But as for this battery, I'm not entirely sure if I should even bother with this yet because of its current condition. Obviously, it does have the connector itself, and I'm sure that the board is still functional. Because of that, I'm going to leave this for another time, but I'm just glad that we were able to actually save everything else and... I'm still excited about the 5S because it has been sitting for a long time. I'm just glad I can actually use it again. And to wrap up the video, what better way to do that than by actually using the 5S that we just repaired. That is definitely a 5S camera and honestly the quality is probably pretty similar to the iPhone 6 that I was just using. I finally dealt with these batteries for the most part anyways. If you enjoyed today's video then consider leaving a thumbs up and if you want to see more awesome contents like this then consider subscribing. But as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.